Hello, America. A lot to do today. I have never, ever called for an opposing voice to be silenced. Not even Osama bin Laden. I believe it is better to have debates in the light of day. At least people can make an informed decision. And it ch by challenging people, it makes people stronger. We can disagree, but it doesn't seem so anymore in America. Have the debate. Others cower. Right now, Soros and his billions of dollars are mounting what they describe as a guerrilla war and sabotage on all of Fox News. That's a quote. And, of course, this program. I guess we're, quoting them again, dangerous. Well, let me ask you, who is more dangerous to a free republic? The one that supports open debate or the one that disguises himself? Calls it an open society while trying to silence all debate. Of course, George Soros doesn't want my voice on the air. Of course, he wants you to sit down as well. Of course, he turns down our invite to be on the show, claiming that he would just be made to look like a foolish old man by me, which is, couldn't be further than the truth. The only thing that would make George Soros look foolish is his ideas spoken clearly out in the open. Ideas that are wildly out of step with the American people, and I do believe becoming dangerous which is why he has to keep them in disguise. He has put together one serious operation. It's a serious operation that is on the wrong side of history. For example, do you know about the, um, the Soros-funded International Crisis Group? Look up the International Crisis Group. It is, oh, it's quite amazing. And it seems to be right in the center of almost everything that is happening overseas especially in Libya now and Egypt. The International Crisis Group has consistently worked to support the groups in the Middle East who want to establish an Islamic government, including the Muslim Brotherhood and even Al-Qaeda. There is a report that came out in uh, June 2008. It's this one. It's entitled, Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood, Confrontation or Integration? Guess what they decided would be best? was put out by his group, the International Crisis Group, who I believe he sits on the board, and so did, um, so did El Baradai for a while. Well, he resigned as soon as he got that call. Hmm. The, reports, um, the report uh, calls um, on Egypt's government and calls the crackdown of Egypt's government back then, uh, the crackdown on the Muslim Brotherhood as, quote, dangerously short-sighted, adding the regime should take pre, uh, preliminary steps to normalize the Muslim Brotherhood's participation in political life. Oh, had Mubarak only listened, had he only listened. Now, while Soros's group advocates for these radical groups, he then singles out Israel, calling them, I'm quoting, the main stumbling block to the transformation of the Middle East. He added in this report, in reality, Israel has much to gain from the spread of democracy in the Middle East as the United States has, but, but Israel is unlikely to recognize its own best interests because the change is too sudden and carries too many risks. Isn't it good to have a grandpa or a great, great, great grandpa that will just take us all by the hand and just fix all our problems because we're just too dumb or young to understand? Remember, George Soros says Israel is the main problem in the Middle East to transformation. It's too scary for them. George Soros is also the guy that believes that this, quoting him, the main obstacle to a stable and just world order is the United States. Whoa. So let's see if we have this right. Israel and the U.S. is an obstacle to what he or his groups believe should happen. Huh. You know who else thinks that? Osama bin Laden. Oh, oh, I know. How about like Iran? Wait, we didn't stand up for the people of Iran. That's a weird coincidence. It's almost like Iran. Remember, they say we're the great Satan and Israel is the little Satan. They're just using Satan while he's using obstacles. See? Now, what about Iran? Well, Iran, they're a little different. They're spookier than even spooky dude. They want to wipe Israel off the map. And they just produced a video saying that the Islamic Messiah is on his way soon. <gasps> Good, the Messiah is coming? No, it's like it's uh, opposite day reading the book of Revelation. Got it? How about the Muslim Brotherhood? The leaders who are openly talking about starting a war with Israel. I thought that they should be brought into the political fold. I want to pretend here for just a moment 
that the news is just a bunch of completely spontaneous, unrelated events. No one is orchestrating anything. And that George Soros wants all the countries of the world to have a Jeffersonian constitution. And that there's nobody on the planet that believes in the 12th Imam or the Mahdi that's going to behead all the unbelievers planet-wide. Or that the administration, let's, let's, plan, let's, let's, let's pretend the administration hearts Israel, okay? And every child in every high school is as talented as all of the kids at that high school on Glee. Now, with that in mind, let's look at the direction in the Middle East. Do you think it's headed towards the, towards the peaceful conclusion? To a happier world? Do you think it's going to end well or not so much? Are things happening that are beneficial to the survival of Israel or not so much? Is there any leader in the world standing up for Israel or not so much? Yeah, Bob, I'd have to go for not so much. Israel is under attack. And let me show you just a couple of things. Okay, first of all, we have George Soros' powerful group and his players in the White House saying that they're obstacles and also his players in the White House are pushing the Responsibility to Protect Act. But let's look here. Obama says that just last September that we want a Palestinian state that it was possible within a year. Listen to this exactly. When we come back here next year, we can have an agreement that will lead to a new member of the United Nations, an independent, sovereign state of Palestine. When they meet a year from that speech, so a year from that speech would be September and uh, 2011. Now, today we learn from an Israeli paper that an unnamed European diplomat has told them, quote, international recognition of Palestinian statehood appeared to be unavoidable in September. Okay, so September of 2011. Hamas is calling on the Arab League to stop Israel from exploiting regional instability to carry out massacres against Palestinians. Wait a minute. That one goes under the responsibility to protect, which is this new George Soros, Cass Sunstein wife kind of thing. We'll get into that later. Okay, got it. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas says he is, he's willing to give up millions in U.S. aid in order to get just a unity deal, a unity deal with Hamas. Great, great, okay. So they're willing to negotiate. Reports this week also say that Abbas ordered lawmakers to complete a draft legislation for a future state. So in other words, draft up the legislation so we can have an independent state within six months. Then six months, that would be, oh yeah, that would be the ninth month of this year. So let's go what else we, we know here. The UN is considering to recognize the Palestinians as an independent state. Yeah, yep, we got that one too. We got this, we got this, we got this. All righty. Norwegian Socialist Party, yeah, yeah. They're calling for action now against Israel military action. They're going to use the responsibility to protect, I think. Muslim Brotherhood is now poised to grab power in Egypt and Libya. Yeah, that's going to be great. They say that they're just ready to declare war against Israel. Oh, and, and one more thing that I'm sure it's not a problem. Remember the president said last night that I'm ready to turn this over to NATO. That's what we're going to do because we've done our job. It's weird because just this morning, I wonder if something happened overnight. The U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, wait for it, wait for it, said, wait a minute, we're not going to turn it over to the, U to the uh, NATO uh, forces yet um, because we haven't uh, decided if we're going to, uh, haven't decided yet. I have no idea. Arm the rebels. No, no. Might. Might not. That brings us to the responsibility to protect doctrine. This states that uh, states have the uh, right to protect the population, in fact, the responsibility to protect the populations from genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and ethnic cleansing. This is apparently what was happening in Libya. 
That's what we use, justification to wage kinetic military action against a country that, as Defense Secretary Gates said, was not a vital interest to the United States. But we had a responsibility to protect. And that was an idea spawned by none other than Samantha Power. She's a White House aide and the wife of the most dangerous man in America, Cass Sunstein. I'm thinking about calling them the most dangerous couple of the year because she's now out in the press bragging that it was Obama who triggered the Libya uprising. What? Excuse me. I'm sorry. Hmm? Power, before being in the White House, explicitly stated how she would deal with Israel. Here she is. There, what we need is a willingness to actually put something on the line in service of helping the situation. And putting something on the line might mean alienating uh, a domestic constituency of <laughs> tremendous uh, political and financial import. Um, it may more crucially mean sacrificing or, or uh, investing, I think, more than sacrificing um, literally billions of dollars not in servicing Israelis' uh, you know, military, but actually in investing in the new state of Palestine, in investing billions of dollars it would probably take also to support uh, I think what will have to be a mammoth uh, protection force. Any intervention is going to come under fierce criticism, mm -hmm. but we have to think about lesser evils, um, especially when the, the human stakes are just becoming ever more um, pronounced. Too high. That bad, bad Israel. The responsibility to protect doctrine. It worked in Libya and they're going to try it again against Israel because the stakes are just too high. Back in 2009, they've already, you know, they tried this back in 2009. No, it didn't go well for them. No, no. You know who tried this? UN official Robert Falk said Israel was guilty of war crimes, not self-defense, after they attacked Gaza. In the letter that he wrote, it, and from an interview from the Institute for Policy Studies. Institute for Policy Studies. That is another George Soros group. Wow, it's the same one that came up with another report begging Obama to rule by executive order. It, no, it was great. When they asked the slightly leading question about the killing of 1,300 Palestinians, mostly women and children, and if it could have been stopped by the UN, the answer was a strong General Assembly resolution yeah. would have set the stage for follow-up and forcible uh, resolutions, possibly including mechanisms for holding Israel, uh, Israeli officials accountable and an arms embargo, or even deploying a ceasefire enforcement or protection force, perhaps based on the Assembly's own embrace of the doctrine known as the responsibility to protect. Mm. You know what, a couple of years ago we could laugh this stuff off because these are just some kooky progressives that we didn't think anybody listened to, but they're the ones calling the shots, and boy, they have been busy while we were asleep. It's pretty obvious, if you want to look at the facts, where the next shot is heading. I've asked this on the show a few times lately. Where's, where's Churchill? Where's Reagan? Where's, where's Lincoln? Where's Washington? Where's anybody? We got Soros. Got him. We got the president. We seem to have socialists everywhere. Brazil. Everywhere. Where's the person standing up for freedom? Where's the person on the national stage standing up for Israel? Do you see him? I mean, really standing up. You got Benjamin Netanyahu, but that's pretty obvious. Tonight, I'd like to add my small little voice and make a declaration as clear as humanly possible that I know what time it is. I've done my homework. I'm also a spiritual guy. God's not going to uh, uh, hold us unaccountable for what we do or do not do, for what we say or do not say, we must stand and be clear. I stand with Israel, and where is anyone else? Now, that doesn't mean you blindly support everything you do, but I stand with them. Now, I know the blogs, especially the Soros blogs, who are hiring more and more interns every day. They're creating jobs. They're going to call me a fraud or a crazy man or an anti-Semitic Jew lover. I don't even know how that one's even possible, but they've tried it. But I will stand. I don't know how long it's going to take for the world to right itself, but I at least know where right is, and that is where I will stand.
Each of us have to ask ourselves, do you stand with the people in this dogfight over in the Middle East? Do you stand with the people that are the most like Americans? They make mistakes. They do. We do too. We suck sometimes as a country. Most times we don't. But we're at least trying to do the right thing. And so is Israel. Or do you stand with those who are teaching to hide, blackmail, rewrite history? People who are trying to destabilize and create fear. I mean, if that's, if that's where you are, what's the difference between you and a terrorist? I would rather stand with the surviving members of the Fogel family. I would, rather, I would rather teach my children the lessons of that brutal murder that were taught by the surviving members. I'd re much rather teach my children about this family and these lessons than the lessons of those who hand out cake in celebration of those who killed that family. Name the country in the Middle East that has the values, generally speaking, that we have. I can only name one. Why are we standing with all those who are against Israel? They've to tolerated more provocations than probably any other country in history. And despite having enough arsenal of nukes to obliterate their enemies, believe me, they can take care of themselves. How many have they lobbed? Answer, zero. While everyone complains about all the evils that Israel has done to the Arabs and then picks apart each tiny imperfection with their democracy, democracy, by the way, a republic is ugly. Tens of millions of Arabs, tens of millions, have suffered atrocities at the hands of their own countries. Gays are still tortured today and killed. Bloggers jailed without cause, women humiliated, raped, and murdered, dissidents killed, protesters shot, terrorists born, suicide bombers given by their mothers. But Israel is the evil one? That's the obstacle to peace? Let me ask you this. How many homosexuals have been stoned to death by the Israelis? How many adulterers have been buried up to their neck in sand and stoned to death in Israel? How many bloggers have been jailed without cause? How many terrorists are wearing a yarmulke? But now, the world is being led to the water that Israel is the evil one and it's about to drink. Don't drink that water. They have measurably no, it's the Middle East. They have immeasurably more freedom than any other Middle Eastern nation. Women are free to drive. Women and our daughters can walk alone in the streets without being stoned or jailed. You can bring a Bible or a Koran into Israel. When a woman can't walk down the street, alone and be safe, and not because she's in a dangerous neighborhood, but because she walked alone without a man? How do you possibly stand with that country? How do you possibly stand with that with a group of people that say, I'm going to kill you if you don't go to my faith? A country that treats women or people who are at all different like a dog, treats a woman as a piece of furniture or a sexual toy that can be raped, and the courts will allow it. How is it that a country like ours actually listens to those evil people saying, this is evil, and we believe it? How many Israelis have taken, have taken someone off the streets and then beheaded them on videotape just for political reasons? Our administration is siding with the wrong side. They are standing against good and encouraging evil in the Middle East. We are reprimanding the nation that is as flawed as we are and protecting the aggressors. We're protecting the killers and the terrorists. We have gone from a nation who was doing the wrong thing 
by siding with Mubarak to a nation who is doing an even greater evil by arming Al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood, which empowers Iran and also, in the end, destroys Israel. It is not difficult to tell good apart from evil. Let's start with some simple ideas. Voting rights, generally speaking, which is better? Voting rights of Iran, Muslim Brotherhood, those who run Al-Qaeda? How about free speech? Rights of women, rights of homosexuals, America and Israel? or the people we seem to be siding with. I stand tonight with Israel. 